Welcome to a new video for MailerShop and today we're going to talk about several serial communication protocols you can decode on an oscilloscope or with a logic analyzer. Let's first discuss some terminology. The term communication is defined as the exchange of information between two or more mediums. In embedded systems, communication means the exchange of data between two microcontrollers in the form of bits. In microcontrollers, this exchange of data is done by a set of defined rules, known as communication protocols. If the data bits are transmitted one at a time in a sequential manner, or in other words, in series, over the data bus or communication channel, then the communication protocol is known as serial communication protocol. If the data bits are transmitted at the same time in parallel over several data buses or channels, then we're talking about parallel communication protocol. There are many examples of serial and parallel communication protocols, but in this video, we're only discussing three different serial communication protocols, which we will decode on an oscilloscope later on in this video. But before I'm going to discuss these topics, I want to talk about the differences between decoding on an oscilloscope without or with a logic probe with a logic analyzer and the difference between decoding on an oscilloscope and decoding on a PC or laptop with a logic analyzer. The problem of decoding on an oscilloscope is mainly that you only have two to four channels that you can use to decode signals. If you use a logic probe together with a logic analyzer on an oscilloscope, you can analyze many more signals. So you can, for instance, compare multiple protocols at the same time. If you connect the logic analyzer to a PC or laptop, like the logic analyzers from Zero Plus, you have also a lot more options than on an oscilloscope. Furthermore, you would maybe rather choose a logic probe on an oscilloscope, if you have a fixed workplace. If you use a PC connected logic analyzer, you first have to start the computer, then start the software, etc. With an oscilloscope and a logic probe directly on your workstation, it will go faster. But now, let's discuss some serial communication protocols. The protocols we are going to discuss are SPI, I2C and UART. First, we are discussing SPI. SPI can be configured either as a master or as a slave. Six wires are needed to connect a master and a slave to each other to be able to send and receive data. The master SPI always initiates the sending and receiving of data by using four different signals in addition to the VCC and the ground connections. First, SCLK is the serial clock, which means that it is a synchronous interface. An asynchronous interface means that there is no clock. Furthermore, we have MOSI, which stands for master out, slave in, and means that there is a data line from master to slave. MISO is master in, slave out, so a data line from slave to master. And finally, we have SS, which stands for slave select. When the SS line is low, communication is happening between master and slave. When the SS line is high, no communication is happening between the two. Theoretically, the SPI can have an unlimited number of slaves, so the situation looks something like this. Now let's discuss I2C. I2C, I2C or inter-integrated circuit uses only two lines for communication between modules. The two lines are SDA, which is the serial data line, and SCL, which is the serial clock line. Both lines need to be connected to a positive voltage supply with a pull-up resistor. The I2C algorithm works as follows. First, the master starts the communication by changing the data line to low and then synchronizing the clock with the slave. Then a 7-bit address is sent to the data line so a connection will be made with the correct slave. This is important because if there are multiple slaves with the same address, collisions will happen since all modules are connected to the same data line. Then a bit is sent to check if something needs to be read or written. Afterward, ACK shows if the address is available or not. If the ACK is low, then the slave can be reached and is available. Then, finally, the data will be sent over the data line. 
In the end, there's a stop condition when first the clock is going high and then the data line is going high. Next, we have UART, which is an acronym for Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter. UART is asynchronous, so it does not have a clock line connected between two modules. The protocol again needs two lines to communicate between two modules. One line is connected from the transmitter pin of one module to the receiver pin of the other module, and the other line from the receiver pin of the first module to the transmitter pin of the other module. The algorithm works as follows. First, a start bit is sent over the data line. Afterward, the data is sent, followed by an optional parity bit and a stop bit. Here, it is important that the clocks of both modules are synchronized since there is no clock signal between the modules. But let's now decode some test signals with these serial protocols on an oscilloscope. Therefore, we will be using the Cichlent SDS1104XE. To demonstrate the various protocols, we also have here a signal testing board from Cichlent. This board is specially made for demonstrations on oscilloscopes, and it can produce all kinds of waves, including signals for decoding serial protocols. First, I will decode a signal with an SPI decoder. We have one probe connected with the serial clock, and another probe is connected to a pin for the receiving data. When we use the decoding feature of the oscilloscope and set the correct settings for SPI, we can see the decoded signal. Since this SPI signal is only 8 bits long, we easily double check if the signal is decoded correctly. As you can see, when we manually decode the signal, we find the exact same result which was also found by the oscilloscope. I2C is a bit more complicated, since the demo board outputs signals with read or write bits, a 7-bit or 10-bit address, 8-bit data, and more. As you can see, the signals are much longer than the SPI signals because of the aforementioned reasons. Also, there are a couple read and write signals. The oscilloscope also shows the decoded data from the signal. UART is more tricky when setting up the oscilloscope with the correct settings. First of all, the baud rate needs to match with the testing board, otherwise wrong messages will be decoded. Also, the data frame format needs to be known. For instance, the testing board outputs 8-bit signals with an odd parity bit and a 2-bit stop bit. Eventually, this is the decoded signal. To summarize, we've explained the differences between decoding on an oscilloscope without or with a logic analyzer or decoding on a PC. Afterward, we have explained with diagrams and data frames three very known serial communication protocols. Furthermore, we have decoded test signals with a signal testing board on an oscilloscope with various serial protocols. Hopefully, you've learned more about the serial communication protocols we've discussed in this video, and I hope to see you at the next video.